Again, Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul sometimes in his epistles introduces uh, who God is, like especially the beginning part. And in 2 Corinthians, uh, Paul introduces God in this way. Let's see uh, chapter 1, verse 3 to 5. I'll read it out to you. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the God, the fa God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction, with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Uh, for as we share abundantly in Christ's suffering, so through Christ we share abundantly in His comfort too. So Paul introduces God as the Comforter. He, com he comforts us and He consoles us. He comforts us in all our afflictions. He comforts or He, he consoles us. Uh, his consolation, His comfort has a, its uniqueness. In verse 5, it says, uh, we experience God's comfort and consolation through Christ. So from chapter 1, verse 3 to 5, we can uh, figure out, we can find out that the concept of God's consolation cannot be defined subjectively. Okay, so when we think about, you know, comforting someone, you know, it's like... Uh, sitting there with them, listening to them. Okay, that must have been very difficult for you. I'm very sorry to hear that you listen, right? Then you feel comforted, right? But that's not how you define God's comfort. It's not about what you feel. If that's how you define God's comfort, you could be comforted, but I might not be, right? But a biblical definition of God's consolation is rather very objective and definitive. It's not about what we feel uh, personally. It has very general definition. And Bible teaches us that we all can experience the same consolation in the faith of Jesus Christ. Uh, let me just put this in Korean. 위로는 감정적으로 정의되지 않고 예수를 믿는 자 누구나 동일하게 경험하는 위로에 대해서 성경이 가르쳐 주고 있습니다. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about. The, the definition of uh, God's comfort, God's consolation. I'm going to use the term like interchangeably. One of the attributes of God's consolation is renewal. Uh, verse, chapter 4, verse 16, we just read. So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. God's comfort renews us every day. It renews us every day. This verse tells us that our inner self is being renewed day by day. On the other hand, our outer self is wasting away. I guess uh, at this point we have to know what it means uh, the outer self and inner self. The definition of outer self has to do with affliction we may experience because of the faith we have in Jesus Christ. So all believers, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you're going to experience uh, difficulties, hardship, persecution one way or the other. And that, that suffering uh, made you wear out. It makes you tired. It, it you know, makes you look old because of the stress. I don't know. <laughs> That's outer self wasting away. And uh, the definition of inner self, I would like to introduce a definition on one of uh, exegetical book on 2 Corinthians, it says, the expression of inner self was used syn synonymously with the word heart in Paul's letter. The inner self represents the center, center of a person, the source of will, emotion, thought, and affection of a man. 
So when the Bible says our inner self is being renewed, it means even though we may become tired and fall in despair because of the faith we have in Christ, our inner self will be renewed every day and we will be able to pass through and overcome any kinds of afflictions. So brothers and sisters in Christ, our comfort and our consolation from God is not about no problems. It's not about no suffering. It's always there. They're going to be always there. And they are there, but our comfort comes from God who renews our inner self every day. People might say that the good life, a good life is a life without any problems. If you have, if you don't have any problems uh, financially or uh, with uh, your relationship wise or any kind of problems, they say it's a good life when you don't have them. But that's not what the Bible says. Uh, a biblical life uh, we discover in this passage is a life with daily renewed power by Holy Spirit to overcome all those problems, all those sufferings, all those uh, afflictions. So please remember the journey with Christ is not about avoiding the problems, not about pretending that there's no problem. It's about fighting, it's about struggling through. It's, and in the end, it's about conquering them by the renewed inner self. And this truth is our comfort and the consolation from God. Second attribute for, of uh, God's comfort and consolation is that in Him, we are able to see and discover what is more important to us. Uh, let's see verse 17. I'll read it out to you. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Here, Apostle Paul describes his affliction, his reality, as light and as momentary. Light means not heavy, right? Uh, he uses these words not because his life was easier than ours. He was uh, beaten almost to death because he believed in Jesus. He had to run away from places to places because he was spreading the gospel. Now his previous reputation as rabbi just became an ash, it became nothing. There were people who cursed him and blamed him wherever he went. So his reality was not light, it wasn't momentary. They were there like until he died. It was long and it was very heavy, but yet, Paul still says, it is light and it is momentary. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hardship, persecutions, sufferings that you may experience because you, have, you believe in Jesus, they are light. They are momentary. I don't want to look down on how you're a reality. I don't want to underestimate the life, the burden of your life. But this is what Bible says. Our life and our affliction that we may experience because we have faith in Jesus, they're light. They're momentary. Uh, but what's more important in here is eternal glory. The eternal glory means the resurrection with Christ. Now, the resurrection of Christ does not just mean that we will be in heaven in the future. Uh, it doesn't just mean that. Because Jesus' resurrection is not just futuristic, but it's about present. It's about now. Uh, so my question to you is, do you have that glory with you? I don't know whether it was coincidence or something. Pastor Hua also mentioned about the resurrection today. 
in his sermon. Uh, but it it should it should be it should matter a lot. So do you do you believe that Jesus resurrected from from death for you? Do you believe that? Are you certain about the glory of Jesus' resurrection is yours? Think about that. Let's think about that. Actually, I know, I know that all of you believe how great Jesus is. And I know that you love Jesus. I know that um, you guys understand what I'm trying to say. Right? But the thing is, does that matter to you? Does Jesus' does Jesus's resurrection, does that matter to you like every day? Do you live by it? really hard to answer, doesn't it? Um, if not quite so, if not quite so, what do you, why do you think that is? Okay. Who doesn't believe resurrection? Can you show me up your hand? Like Jesus died for you on the cross and he resurrected after three days. Who doesn't? I know that almost all of you believe in that, right? But um, just today, did you like wake up in the morning with like a, with such great glory? Okay, Jesus lived again. That's good. That's awesome. I can start a good new day. Who did that today? Have you ever done that? <laughs> good for you. But we should do this every day. But we don't. Why do you think that is? Verse 18. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. Because Jesus' resurrection is invisible. It's unseen. And Verse 18 shows uh, our identity as a Christian. And we are the people who look to the things that are unseen. Verb here, look to, can also be translated as a fix our eyes. Fix our eyes. In NIV, it says fix our eyes. It means that we put our hope, we focus, we pour our hearts into so believing in Jesus is about anticipating and it is about hoping for what is unseen. And it is about also about focusing and pouring our hearts. There are some expected consequences when you make decisions according to your faith. When you're at your work, when you're with your family, if you try to make your decision according to your faith, you can expect certain consequences. Maybe usually negative. That, I guess that's why we hesitate to choose that path. So we have this visible reality and invisible Jesus' resurrection. Because our reality is visible, His resurrection starts to not matter in our lives. The Bible is teaching us today that we are the people who fixes our eyes to invisible, but very surely it's there, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We believe that our reality is light and momentary. The reality, visible reality here, sometimes it feels huge. It's right there, it's giving us a hard time, it's huge, but the Bible says it's light, it's momentary, it's, it's going to pass. 
Jesus' resurrection, invisible, but it lasts forever. It's heavy. It should matter a lot more than our reality. Uh, we are certain that our afflictions, difficulties, and sufferings and we may face because of the faith will pass, but the glory of Jesus' resurrection reside in us forever. We know it and we believe it, so we live by it. So God's comfort and consolation is that He makes us able to see what lasts forever. So His comfort is not about us feeling good. His consolation is not about, okay, Jesus, I feel better now. It's not about that. It's about Him changing us so that we can see what lasts forever and what doesn't. God's consolation is that our loss for now will pass, but the victory in Him will last forever. Therefore, uh, news, I pray, and I want to encourage that all of you would have that faith. And I encourage that we, we'd all have the eyes that can see what's eternal. So let's not try to get cut up by what will only last momentarily. It could be your money, your fame. I guess we're not that famous, but... Um, Anyways, maybe if you are, your fame, uh, your spouse. Okay. Our hope is not, not in our spouse, right? Not in your husband, not in your wife, and not your children, of course. And all are important. I'm not saying those things are not important. Those are important. But they are light, they are momentary compared to Jesus. I'm not saying you should abandon everything, but think about but think about what you're living according to. That's what I wanted to say to you. Think about what you're living according to or living by. I bless that all our members would learn and experience God's consolation and live according to it. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you comfort you comfort our soul with that everlasting glory. We thank you that you sent Jesus to us and changed us to see what is unseen. Lord, I ask that you would give us the heart to fix our eyes to uh, beyond uh, what we can see now. And let us hope for what is beyond our reality. Lord, I just want to bless this wonderful community by the word of God. Let us redirect our heart from our own emotion and interpretation and our own comfort to the word of God and the promise of God. Lord, we just want to say that we love you, and we need you, and we want to live by you. By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of our Heavenly Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. Amen. Amen.